Yeah, oh, bloody hell. Have you got any Epsom salt, Suze? 1500, a bit of 2000. Just going over it all. Some water with a tiny bit of washing detergent in. Going to sport. And they were horrible, those girls. Oh, yeah. It's nice and smooth now. Family of fine cars. Beautiful. Also, chuck this window in here. Looking rather good. Also starting to um, sort of uh, use different grades of paper to get this nice and level and then I can sort of buff it and, and redo that black section for the sill. Well it's been a little bit of a, a while since I've done some work on this car. I've been busy with these little Toyotas and uh, Got a couple of them for my son, the wrecked one which is gone now and of course this one which he's going to do some welding on and do up with me. So now it's time to do some more work on the XW and I've got a couple of little bits and pieces. You can see it's got the right transfer now, this is just a TV engine, um, that's just sitting there. I haven't put it on yet and I'm not going to destroy that lid, I've got another lid to paint and put that on. So that when I do get the Edelbrock manifold and the Holly Carburetor, um, It'll, I can just swap them back over, but I don't like things that say things that aren't, that aren't right. Uh, if you remember, this is sort of following more a Mustang type theme, um, or at least not the traditional XW GT slash GS theme, um, because I wanted something different. And most of them, you lift up the bonnet and you've got 351 high performance and all this sort of stuff. I didn't want that. Um, just to recap, it has got a lovely Lunatic cam, which is very carefully dialed in. So uh, when it has got the right manifold and carburetor, it should make fairly similar power to what a GT does. The camshaft is bigger than a GT's one, but um, it doesn't have the compression that a GT has. I wanted to keep it on pump fuel. So in the meantime, I've been starting to put these trims on. These are horrible things to put on, and to find a good set is really, really difficult indeed. Um, again, these sorts of things I can replace later. Uh, rather than spending a thousand dollars or so getting all of the trims done, the stuff that's easy to get to, such as tail lights and trims and this sort of stuff, I can do later. Although I will get the uh, the top windscreen one done because um, that's a little bit ripply and all that sort of stuff. And they're at pig to put on, so I'll get that done soon. Side glass is all in. You can see that it's all looking rather special. Um, and so is the quarter glass. All these rubbers are replaced. They're a pig of a thing. These these outer ones, the inner ones fit well. The outer ones don't. They annoyed me. Um, and I'm sort of gearing up now to do the headline. You can see I've got all this padded wind lacing hanging off the ceiling of the garage um, and of course the front trim for the uh, for the headlining just here. These all need to be painted with a flex aid so that um, they don't peel and of course I've also got these parts up here armrests and kick panels. This one's been painted and these touching up so I'll just give that another coat and also the carpet finishing trims over there. So they're all being sort of prepared to be painted and uh, I've ordered the headlining now. XW Falcons use a different headlining to XYs or at least they changed in 1970. This is a 1969 car and I wanted the white perforated XY headlining. The original headlining was the moon crater type, I didn't want that. Um, I wanted the nice white one uh, with the perforations, I think it looks nicer. So I told the guy that made it it's a 69 car. So he's made the later headlining look or fit to the earlier car if you know what I mean. So once I've got these painted, which I'll do tomorrow, um, oh, I've also got to paint the puzzle tree. Here it is here. Um, this is just masonite. That'll just be done in the saddle colour as well. Um, so once they, they, I've got the rear window sealed too, that's in there on the floor. Um, so once I've got that done, I've got a friend who watches these videos and actually bought some hubcaps off me off um, eBay 
and he's a, an ex motor trimmer, so he's going to come and give me a hand putting the, the uh, headlining in. So once the headlining is in, which will be really quite soon, then the glass can go in, and then I can start making real headway and put the interior together. Stuff. You don't get it out. You don't get it out. No. Does it look good? Yep. Yeah. Alright, watch this because it's going to be boiling water. What we'll do is let it sit there. I just want to clean it out because it looks pretty manky. So I've got where the um, engine identification badge goes. This used to say 3.6 litre, and I took a gamble because I'm assuming the V8 one's the same. So I'm just going to make up a template out of a middle of a folder and sort of rig it up. I've just stuck this up to this line here and I've just run my finger down and so I can see where the edge of the guard is and I'll just use a pen line under here. Alright so I've put this template sort of back right on that line there. There are the two holes for the badge and I've followed it down this line to under there so that way and it's right up against that line there so that way I can transfer that to the other side 65 to 68 Ford Mercury radiator hose it's not a well it's a Ford it's not a Mercury so I'll just stick this on um, this is another bit my brother got for his Mustang that she didn't end up using because he's got this overflow alternative overflow arrangement so this thing just plugs sort of onto the part here sort of approved forward stuff we just sort of root it down the side and that'll be all hunky dory so that if it does overflow it doesn't make a mess everywhere it's even concord correct ribbed out a wall well, there's nothing concord correct on this car is that fine as well it's going pretty mental science the science of stupid isn't it and we just let that sit. Christ. Whoa. We're good. Bit of a difference. Well, it's sort of ironic that the worst part of the car when I got it was the roof. And I reckon I absolutely aced that. Done a great job with that. Um, the disconcerting part is it's the best part of the whole car. I wish the rest of the car was as good as that. Well, it's not bad. But it's just not quite as good. Oh, look at this. A lovely cup of tea in a nice clean mug. That tannin, that all that brown stuff won't come out with normal washing liquid, but uh, the old bicarb really helped it. Hmm. Got to discuss a few things. I have a friend, Jason, coming over. He's going to help me put the headlining in today. And I've got a couple of bits ready. Padded wind lace, which I've painted using a flex aid, so it's nice and flexible. Uh, they're all done. I've got the four of them there, plus the uh, front moulding that goes that sort of pinches the headlining into that steel trim. All the headlining bows, numbered 135, I took off, oh, was it the 8th of June last year? I looked at my notes, and uh, so that's 18 months it's been without a headlining now. Um, different types of contact adhesive with a couple of brushes and even a can opener. Um, that's like a gel type one, this is a liquid one, I'm not sure what Jason wants to use but I've got them both there for him. The uh, frame for the interior light so we can put that up, I've got the lens yet and the screws there. Rear light shades for the courtesy lights at the back. Uh, this is a bit of pinch well, now this is off another job I did years ago uh, and I kept it, I always keep things like this. This will hold the headlining um, around the rear window until I get the glass fitted if that makes any sense. There's a lip there and I don't want it to come out, uh, so that'll hold it there until that's done. A uh, hairdryer, and this is uh, owned by my wife and adult daughter, and you can tell the girls in my family used it by the state of the cord, they never uncoiled it. And this lovely headlining, and this is a lovely white perforated one. I wanted the perforated one, I think I discussed that before, just because I think it looks nicer and fresher. Well, I've got Jason here helping me, he's putting the headlining bows in now. I think it's the lower holes, I might have made a mistake, so we're just going to start with the lower holes and see how it goes. That's it's probably better if you probably better if you explain it, because I can't remember what we did. We've got all the headlining bows set up on the lower holes, and we had a little bit of trouble with that between the third and fourth one being a bit baggy in this area here. So I've had to sort of rotate the bow over, but I've got the insulation a little bit close up there, so 
I think we're going to be all right now. What's your opinion, Jason? Yeah, if we pull it from back to front, it'll all come out. He's left absolutely yards of it spare. So we can sort of, um, we've got a lot to play with and sort of trim it accordingly. But at the moment, so far, so good. good. That's good. Yeah, it doesn't look bad, does it? There's yeah. stacks of material. Yeah. There's a full three inches there. Yep. There's about a foot of it at the back, so there's a lot of material there. <laughs> Curse it all goes wrong. <laughs> All right, we're sticking a bit of adhesive under that front lip. I'm holding a bit of cardboard so it doesn't go everywhere. This is just a liquid contact adhesive. <gasps> a bit. A bit Beautiful. I can't it accept it. Oh, yeah, there. Yeah. It sits on that edge. This edge here. No, no, not that edge. That edge under there. Okay. But yeah. doesn't it fold around this little It does, edge? it does. But it, it glues. It glues up there and comes up over. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. that that's where you start your gluing from inside there. Because that's that's the leading edge. That's the, that's the edge that's seen. Okay. And then it folds up. Cool. I don't even know that. I don't remember how I pulled it out of the shank. Well, I don't even know that either. I'm just assuming. But I, that's what it's like in a wagon. Oh, okay. So, but but that is the, that's the leading edge. So it's going to get seen. Oh, okay. Cool. Got a bit of pinch weld there, a bit of the old black pinch weld holding that up while we sort of stretch it. Actually, I was saying we, I'm not doing anything, Jason's doing it. I'm just sort of looking. But it's already looking a million bucks. It's looking really, really good. So we haven't even touched the sides or anything yet. Just a matter of doing these front bits or front and rear bits. And then we're getting ready to sort of cut it and fold it under and put that trim on. Awesome. Beautiful. So he's opening the segment now so we don't get a lump. Oh, it's been sewn twice. What we need to do is we need to unpick that seam line. So all of the seams are glued. Okay. Except for this back one here. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, so I did it on this XC. Yeah. And it looked like a friggin' scrotum it had that many wrinkles in it. <laughs> Actually, I do need some pinch well, bud. Yep, I'm going to get it for you. So we're just trimming around here. Mm-hmm. Where'd you fucking do it? <laughs> oh, I better cut that out. Beautiful. And we're getting there. It's looking really, really good now. Loving it. Loving it. Too easy. On the home straight now, been at it for four hours, it's pretty dark out here. Should I mention this? Got a problem with the headlining in that the last panel was too long. And what that's meant is that the headlining bow is lying down at the back here. And so it's gathered at the, at the edges there. But, but it's absolutely brilliant. And I tell you what, there's no way in a pink fit I'd be attempting this sort of gig by myself. Got pinch weld all along the top edge here just to hold it until we get the back window in. But uh, very, very happy indeed. You gather from if they because they're sort of they're not really following you closely, but they follow your you know the examples and yeah. your lessons. You see, well, you can see it down there, but it's not that conspicuous. I've still got this thing rolling, by the oh, way. Okay, didn't realise. No, 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 we're good, we're good. But um, off the shelf headlinings, you do uh, if the pattern's slightly off from the original, then that that sort of thing's going to happen. And they. So you can see here that the headlining looks absolutely lovely, but there is a terrible problem with it. I'm just going to crawl in here. Uh, in that, this panel here is far too long. That's just too long, and that bow is lying down. And what's happened there is we've got wrinkles here, and we've got wrinkles there. It looks dreadful. But the rest of it looks really, really good. There are a few um, little marks here and there, but they all come out with heat. In fact, a lot of them have come out today already, because um, it's 35 degrees in here. So there's not much we can do with this. I think it's trash. We're going to have to do it again. Um, Jason wasn't happy with it. He, he had an issue with it and he wanted to do it again. I felt guilty because he did it as a favour. But uh, one thing I'm going to try and, do, try and do before we write it off completely is unpick it here and move that headlining bow back a little bit and see if that'll stand it up and clear out some of those lines. You can't see it, actually. The light's terrible. Now I've unpicked it and we can see there that headlining bow there is lying too far back 
Um, so the, the thinking is if we can drill it back further here, but that's, um, I don't think we can because that's sort of double skinned. It'll have to come back there. So it's a good 40 mil out. But in doing that also, that's going to push that right up and it might make it too short to stretch this back down again. So I think this headlining has actually uh, reached the end of its life, even though it's only brand new. So I've moved it up, I've sort of made a mark, I've scratched it a bit, but I've sort of moved the bow back. And just by, ro what it's done is it's rotated it, and you can see it's completely it's, uh, stretched out the other side. Now I haven't done that side yet. The challenge now is to sort of put all this back the way it was, if it'll reach, because it's a good chance it won't. And this is going to have to be sort of, oh, you can't see with light. This is going to have to all be redone here. So we'll have a go at that now. So we're not of the woods yet. I'm just using bits of wind lace. This is the old wind lace. I've cut into sort of three and four centimetre lots lengths and I can sort of pull it up and tease it out. There's a gather up here, which I've got to get out. I'm not out of the woods yet, but I'm sort of hopeful that I might have dodged a bullet because we can stretch that down. Um, and if that works, I'll tell you what, I don't have to cull this headlining because I'm really, really happy with it. It's just this back part that looked terrible. We might have dodged a bullet, but not going to count our chickens yet. This has turned out to be something of a job of then I've picking it back to about here. Can I see my finger? Yeah, up to about halfway. And run unpicked it all down here and all up that C pillar. And I've sort of put it on as best I can with the put it on as best I can with the um, bits of pinch weld and I've got it really, really close together. Um, just to see how it is with the window seal sitting in because then it really is quite taut now. Hopefully it's, it sort of finds its way sort of settled if you know what I mean, but the important thing is These lugs for this interior light are in the same spot. There's a bit of glue here I can clean it up with metho thanks to JC he told me how to do that. I wouldn't have had a clue And so I reattach it down here and also down there and I reckon You know what I reckon I've hit a home run. These things are crap. I mean they really are rubbish uh, they don't sit in terribly well. They don't clip. You don't hear them au an audible clip like that. They sort of pop um, I'm going to modify that. That could be because I've got it too tight here. Uh, I was sort of warned that might happen, but uh, if I can tighten the clip up, just sort of spread it, heat it up with a cigarette lighter, and then sort of tighten it up um, by separating those, it might it look. It, it might be fine. You know, if I you know, I don't want to take this out if I don't have to. That's for sure. We have a lovely padded windlass here. Now these are painted with an acrylic paint and uh, it's satin so they put an additive in to take the gloss off and you can see you can squeeze it and it doesn't crack that's what it's supposed to do the other thing is it's really push that back it really is very very strong in terms of resilience and you can it surprised jason yesterday he said you know you shouldn't be painting plastic parts it, they're always going to chip and all that sort of stuff and crack but you can actually hit it with an oil on hammer it does absolutely no damage. It, it still looks perfect. So I'm just going to go around and put this wind lace on and it'll hold the headlining really, really tight, which is what we want. Um, and they might need feathering with later because I think the centre part has a trim in the middle of it and I haven't got those. So if they do fall short, um, I can take this off and I can re sort of do bits of that. But at the end of the day, it looks the goods. Finally, this car is starting to look really, really good. Let me take that off. Awesome. Well, I must say I'm pretty happy. We've got it all in. I just want to say thanks to Jason for all his time. He's, he's been very generous with his time. I've got to get a new um, shade for this because I ended up breaking that one. Uh, padded wind lace is in. Although I might have to fiddle with that to sort of make it a bit better on those two, on the tops of those two B pillars. Um, but I've already spoken to the screen guy and he's going to come over next week and we'll put these back windows in. Um, we'll put the back window and also the windscreen in. And then we can start on the next video, we'll start putting all these chrome trims around here. Um, I've got to fill the rear axle up, it's going to be easier in the boot here without the petrol tank in. So I can fit these trims up. Um, Fill the rear axle with oil. I'm going to change those re those rear springs because the ride height's just ridiculous on this thing. It's still far too high, and it won't settle to four inches or whatever it needs to. And so at that point, I can put the rear shockers in, 
Um, then the fuel tank can go in, the spare, put the boot on, all that sort of stuff. It is very much worth though, when you do buy headlining, um, normally what you would do is take the old headlining out carefully and give it to a trimmer and he can make it uh, using yours as a pattern because there is variation with some of these cars. Um, but whatever the case, this was far too long and really shouldn't have been fitted. But at the end of the day, I'm pretty happy with how it's turned out. So I'm going to leave it. Um, but I should probably have kept the old one. It was careless of me, a bit, a bit careless of me not to. Some details will have to be revisited. That uh, headlining where it's folded, the B-pill is going to have to be sort of folded up a little bit higher when those trims are put on. But at the end of the day, it's all good. Uh, so I hope you've enjoyed it. Take care and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.